But with that being said, should we jump into the, the news from this week? Yeah. Head first. Yeah. yeah. So we're actually starting with an email that we got just about 10 minutes ago. It's really not any super major news, but it is sort of a neat note that we want to want to highlight. The uh, Cannabis Advisory Council here in Minnesota now has their first meeting scheduled. Mm-hmm. They'll be meeting uh, uh, end of March. So we'll be seeing that meeting coming up Friday, March 29th from 10 to noon. And if you would like to be part of that meeting, you can join into that. They have a Zoom. You'll be able to at least listen hear about what that advisory council is doing, hear them elect a vice chair, hear them get an updated, uh, like a implementation uh, update on what things have been done. Nothing super huge newsworthy, (laughs) but glad to at least see that moving in the right direction. Are they going to have this available online for viewing for people who are not able to like step away from work to listen from 10 a.m. to 12 noon? That's such a good question. So I certainly hope that, the OCM takes that step, but either way, we'll be there recording it. We'll make sure to have it. You can always check out our YouTube page for some of those past events because there have been a couple meetings that were not recorded and they had, and we've been able to share that information out. So you can go check those right on our YouTube page on that chest. We're saying this one's not too big of an of event, but I think hearing hearing and seeing who's on that council mm-hmm. and hearing what how the OCM is communicating their implementation to them will be very important. So yeah. if yeah, if you like actually hearing from these people, which we really get to do, this is a great opportunity. Yeah, and r- I remember when some of these people were first appointed that their seats are going to last, some of them, through like 2028. Mm-hmm. So these are people that will have a pretty big voice in the cannabis industry for the next couple of years, mm-hmm. not people that we can really ignore. The good thing is that if they are recommending bad advice, the OCM does not have to, like, accept it. No, it's advisory. They're like, thanks for the suggestion. (laughs) We're not doing that. Prohibitionists. And we certainly hope that uh, we see that office take a pretty proactive role in ensuring that the program looks how we want it to. And, And, well, I certainly have a lot of faith in many of these advisors. Some of them, frankly, I've never heard of before. So I'm excited to get to meet them for the first time at that meeting. Some and they're going to include the prohibitionists. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the news that didn't just happen in the last 15 minutes, but actually some news that happened in the last couple of hours or, or days, depending upon when you're listening to this. So we've been hearing a lot about this increased enforcement around THCA flower, around non-compliant products, around really the Office of Medical Cannabis, Office of Cannabis Management, and police departments sort of partnering together to figure out what does compliant products look like today? How do we ensure that stores are actually following through on this? Mm. And we've heard a lot of rumblings of maybe cease and desist letters, a lot of rumblings of people getting warnings. But this was really our first sign, at least publicly, of police departments going into stores saying, this is not compliant. We're working with the Department of Health and we are seizing your product. So we should be a little bit more clear. So Albert Lee Police Department and the Minnesota Department of Health inspected 12 businesses on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. So if you're listening on Monday of last week, Um, And corrections were made at eight of those businesses, including removing or destroying illegal products, correcting labels on products, and also moving products behind counters, which we know cannabis products can't be within reach of people, so just moving them out of reach. Mm. Minor adjustment, but interesting to see that there were some products that were either removed or altogether destroyed. You you surprised? (laughs) Well, (laughs) I think I'm more surprised that we're actively seeing that enforcement. I love, yeah, this is the first time I think we've seen two sides of the enforcement with the police department and department of health, because mm-hmm. they have different purviews when it comes to cannabis. And the problem that we found ourselves in was department of health could not actually do anything about vapes and flower. And the police couldn't do anything about edibles. So it was like, <laughs> we need to go together. I'm glad they figured that out. Yeah. Do they call those conundrums. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there were some gummies that exceeded that state limit, not just like, oh, they were a little bit over, but like they were packaged as being clearly over, yeah, yeah. clearly over the state limit. There were products containing Delta 10 and HHC, which is currently in Minnesota. You can't have those in any products. And then they also had a bunch of CBD and also CBD vapes, which as of today, not legal here in Minnesota, at least to sell. We should clarify many of these products would be legal to possess, possess but yeah. many of them not legally to sell out of a store. So 8 out of 12 of the businesses were Mm -hmm. non-compliant. Yeah. So it's interesting to note that while product was seized or destroyed or or altered in some way, there were no actual citations written. This was all just educational coming out and saying, hey, I don't know if you know this, that product actually has to be 
behind your counter and I'm going to wait here to make sure that you do that. Or, hey, this product that you have, that flower, you can't actually sell through the store and that's illegal. So we're going to be taking that. But nobody was disciplined beyond that, you could say. It was all just regulatory action. I like that. If they keep that good faith effort of like, hey, none of us really know what these rules are, so let us tell you in person, mm-hmm. I, I encourage encourage this. Yeah. yeah, I think it's good because I think there's going to be a, a lot of irresponsible, well, maybe they're just ignorant. I say the distributors just come and drop them off. That oh, happens wow. a lot. Where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you guys want all this free stuff? And then they yeah. leave. <laughs> So they're thinking because since the distributors are offering it that it's okay. Bingo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a spectrum of there's very clearly some bad actors in the industry that are saying, "Hey, I don't have to abide by these rules. I can just sort of do what I want." And then I think there's some other people that are maybe in the middle of maybe they know and they don't want to look it into legal. it. <laughs> yeah, and then I think there are people on the way other end of the spectrum who maybe like you run a small coffee shop in Bemidji or whatever. Someone comes and says, hey, this is legal for you to sell, and we've been selling it to other stores, and we really think you should carry this. And maybe you look at it, and it looks like a legally compliant product. It, like, checks those boxes in your head. Usually when it's packaged well, which a lot of these illegal mm-hmm. products are, like, that's when people just completely turn for sure. all, like, their um You've been in other stores. Off. You've seen that these are legal for people to sell. You assume if someone's coming to sell it to you, it must be legal. Or a brand that carries both legal and non-compliant yeah. stuff. Same. Yeah, similar looking packaging. I've seen all of these mm-hmm. around the state. So I'll be curious to see as we get deeper into regulation, because I think right now there's that there's that spectrum. People could be sort of maybe a little bit confused. I think come a year from now, I think honestly six months from now, if you're still selling flour out of your store, you got to know that that can't be legal. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, Albert Lee you know Police Department coming for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'd be funny if they just sent the Albert Lee Police Department up and down the state. They're like, no, you guys did a good job the first time. <laughs> they are the new police, the the cannabis regulators. I don't know if you know that Albert <laughs> Lee was given statewide jurisdiction. <laughs> Someone tell OCS. Oh, sounds like a level up. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's move from just Minnesota-specific news to looking at a little bit of national cannabis news. So we talked on the podcast last week about how the State of the Union this year was the first time cannabis was mentioned, at least on the legalization side, during a State of the Union address. Not enough action, even close, but at least a step maybe in the right direction. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> a, a pinky, you know, what's the phrase that we used to use? It's a toe in the right direction. Yeah. It's, it's a good, inching along. Not your big toe. Either. No, definitely not your big toe. <laughs> you got to turn your foot sideways. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, we had some uh, congressmen and women that reached out to President Biden saying, hey, that was not enough. You need to continue moving forward. And by the way, you said that you've given people clemency, but actually you haven't let a single person out of jail. You've, Which I think is the biggest part. Yeah, you've said, hey, yeah, we can you know, pardon some simple possessions, but those aren't the people that are facing incarceration right now. Mm-hmm. And so these congressmen, including our own Representative Ilhan Omar, sent a letter to President Biden saying, we need change. Ilhan Omar was our only representative in Minnesota that joined on to this letter. Pretty disappointing to not see any of our other senators or representatives, but... Isn't there a guy not running surprising? for... Dean Phillips running for president? No. He, he didn't say anything? Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, not anymore. Yep, he's done so. What did uh, Homer Simpson <laughs> say? You tried and you failed. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That's, it, it, he, he had the best tweet after he resigned, which is that... Uh, congratulations to Marianne Williamson, uh, Nikki Haley, Uncommitted, and some guy who won in the what real it, front row. Yeah, <laughs> for 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 getting more support than myself. So, hey. whatever, whatever. This uncommitted guy seems like he's coming out of. Nowhere. I know, crazy. <laughs> yeah, getting pretty big sweep here in Minnesota. Yeah. But you know, there's like 500 Congress members, so like 36 is not. It's even weak. It is one percent. Yeah, <laughs> it's very it is weak. Really bad. Yeah. Really, really bad. It's, so nice, it's, yeah. it's nice to see one of our reps in that number, but yeah, you got to pump up those numbers, yeah. lucky numbers. And we just want to be very clear because we've been getting some pushback on social media. And we, we know President Biden has not pardoned a single person that has released in anyone being incarcerated in prison. Yes, there have been cannabis related pardons. But if you're someone who is sitting at home, not actively incarcerated, that pardon is not in of itself the only thing that is there to help you. But the people in prison, the people that are actually behind bars for cannabis, continue to face incarceration. 
is just embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we see some action there. But in reality, as of date, we haven't seen anything. So don't hold your breath. No. I mean, but it's election year. You never know. Yeah. You never know in election year. And they're sure making a lot of noise about it. Kamala Harris on Friday, so the day that we're recording this, held a roundtable talking about the importance of cannabis legalization, really trying to verbally push forward. But sure haven't seen a, a pen get here. signed for anything yet. Yes, yeah, she was here. Yep, she, first oh, time a vice president finished in a, an abortion clinic yeah, here in Minnesota. Same ball, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Should we talk more about national news? Why not? No, 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 no. Well, let's, let's, I heard that a judge <laughs> recently. <laughs> Oh, let's talk about some state politics. How about that? Ooh. So, guys, we had a ton of action on cannabis legislation this past week, mm-hmm. right? Whirlwind. Whirlwind? No. Actually, um, as of this recording, there has yet to be a single movement forward on any bill beyond a minor clarification around workplace testing mm-hmm. that still allows for cannabis testing. It's just like a minor phrasing change. That is the only time a cannabis-related bill has gotten a hearing yet in the state of Minnesota for this legislative session. And we're, we're, we're saying it like this because a bunch of cannabis bills have come out so far. I think we're up to six. Oh, we're up to way more than that. We've, <laughs> we've had probably about 12 introduced thus far. Yeah. If we're looking at hearings. those with like mm-hmm. just the Senate bill, we might be closer to like 15. Yeah. And so, but so we've made a lot of, a lot of policy, but we've yet to debate on that policy, which Running out of time here, Tanner. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are. Is it the committee deadline is like in five days. Is that right? Five days for those who respect it. It's like so the if they NFL don't receive salary. a hearing and get the bill advanced, then it's done for this session. So yes it just needs to make no. it through at least one committee. Yeah. Yeah, but l- they need to do that in the next five days. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I would say what I'm expecting is uh, commerce and consumer protection in the Senate will take it up, move it through this week make sure it's got through a committee and then and then really start working it through the rest of the committee process i think they're gonna start whatever they need to start i guess this week if we're you listen on monday next week if you're in the room with us so you're <laughs> saying no hearings have been held in the senate but have they gone through the house none there either there's been uh, nothing they've just wow. slow rolling it <laughs> so representative stevenson hasn't even scheduled a hearing for his own bill Nope, not that we've seen. Nope. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting to see Port and Stevenson lead a bill that's supposed to be headlined by the OCM, like helping to lead this forward. There's not even been a hearing. Damn. Yeah, it's been pretty disappointing. So, John, I I really want to vibe with your optimism. I really want to say, like, I hope <laughs> that this week we see some action here. Um, I'm I'm curious to see. I guess we'll, by Friday we'll know no. whether we're going to see any cannabis action, whether we'll see, you know, social equity licenses reformed, whether we'll see, you know, perhaps moving forward of like limited licensure, a lot of things on the table, uh, extra grow rights for patients, a caregiver program that allows you to give your right to grow to other people to grow for you. Like there's so much at the legislature right now. It's all just waiting. I mean, I'll be cautiously optimistic. They often ske- schedule hearings like on very short notice, right? Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. they've done they've done a couple surprise ones where it's like rent eleven a.m. Bam! Oh, there's a hearing! Ah, ah, everyone has to run around. So I'm just hoping for that. Honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been googling quote hope. Minnesota end quote quote cannabis end quote mnledge dot com and doing a lot of like really searching every hour to see if there's anything and. Uh, Nothing yet, but hopefully we do see some action. Have there. you signed up for the alerts on the bills? Yeah, those sometimes come a little bit slower, though. I notice if you're yeah, yeah. if you're just googling every hour, you generally get it faster than the emails. But you spend a lot of time at the computer. You know, legis legis scan. Oh yeah, all that good stuff. Pretty pretty good. <laughs> well, so let's talk about some of the bills that were introduced because there were two bills introduced that that I think will either have a very positive or perhaps a very negative uh, impact in the cannabis industry. And while we haven't yet seen that hearing scheduled, as you mentioned, that could happen pretty last minute. We could see some movement on either of these. So we should at least let people know about some of the legislation being looked at. The first one is House File 4789 or Senate File 4524. And what that would do is it would change the definition of who is a qualified medical patient from those with only a set list of diagnosed disabilities. Um, you, you have to have a, a patient or a doctor verify that you have one of those conditions 
This would change it to anyone, quote, approved by the patient's healthcare practitioner. So if your doctor believes your life could be improved with cannabis medicinally, they could recommend you to be a medical cannabis patient, and that's all that you would need. You wouldn't need to have IBS or autism or one of the conditions. You could just have and something that your doctor believes could be impacted. Correct me if I'm wrong. Getting on the program is also free now. It yeah, is, as correct. Of last year. Yeah, so really the only fee you have to pay right now is to the doctor. If this would allow, you know, everyone to be able just to go to their standard care doctor, say, hey, by the way, do you think cannabis could maybe help me with this? If they say yes, that's that's enough for this. Uh, as of right now, there's at least you got to find the specific doctor that's willing to do that recommendation. Um, but yeah, this could open it up so that so many more people from sleep apnea to well, sleep apnea is an approved condition today. But, uh, you know, for all the other conditions in life that cannabis could potentially help with, this would allow people to sort of throw off the chains of that government regulation to be able to say, this is just a conversation between me and my doctor. Like, hey, doctor, should be. hey doctor I'm having an itchy buttocks crack. <laughs> <laughs> or a Dorito aversion syndrome. It's, it's all the, it's all the old stoner methods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Athlete's foot. Yeah, they, Cannabis doctor. can't hurt with that, right? <laughs> and if your doctor says no, you can just get a second opinion. Like, which one of your peers yeah. would, would yeah. recommend it? This would allow you to any any primary care practitioner would be able to prescribe it or recommend it. Um, so hopefully we see some action there. I think that would really open it up. We have a pretty limited program here in Minnesota where for someone to get a condition approved on the program, and actually the commissioner of health has to personally approve it, is an entire appeal process. This would make it so much more of a conversation between my doctor and me. Yeah, and th we have had prohibitionist commissioners of health. I remember there was one opposing the legalization bill like a couple of years ago. So now it's, yeah, I really like, like a recent commissioner. Streamlining mm -hmm. all that to be like, okay, your doctor said yes, you can hop on the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Simple as. Yeah. We're a legal state. Yeah. Let's keep it like that. And that's the thing. If people will be able to already go into the adult use shops and search cannabis, this just sort of provides them more of that medical route to be able to explore it with someone who has more of that expertise. I'll say no taxes on medical cannabis. Bingo. Bingo, hey, bingo, bingo. Maybe bingo. I <laughs> sign up. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, we should talk about one other bill, um, House File 4871 or Senate File 4957. This just bans any flavored uh, vaporizable or smokable cannabis products. So you couldn't, for example, have like a vape cart that's been flavored to taste like bananas. It would have to be flavored to taste like cannabis. And this one, when I first read the house version, I was like, okay, whatever. Cannabis can taste like anything because uh, the plant's natural, you know. Right, they can, so there's flavorful terpenes. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing it's is... Like, We've seen so many different terpenoid and terpene profiles be able to be expressed by this plant. I think this would just limit it to perhaps, you know, cannabis infused terpenes or, or, or cannabis derived it's terpenes like specifically. We don't need artificial flavors in cannabis. It's already flavorful enough. Yeah. So I'm cool with it. Yeah. yeah, as long as it doesn't like prevent people from having like, because I've smoked some herb that tasted so good. I'm like, it must have, uh, yeah, but that's the thing. The herb, it yeah. already does that. So, some of it is so delicious. Uh, well, if you have thoughts on these bills, come on out to our event on Wednesday. We do hope to have a discussion with people, talk a little bit more about your thoughts on all of these. Uh, so, so come on I out, that's for sure. The last part of that bill, it all bans ads that promote the consumption, the co-consumption of cannabis flower, a cannabis product, a lower potency hemp edible, or hemp-derived consumer product with alcohol. And I ask you all, what the hell does that actually mean? Basically yeah. means you can't run an ad where people consume both alcohol and cannabis at the same time, which yeah. as of today, surprisingly, is legal. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought that was already. Uh -huh. uh, we won't be running those ads, run that's for sure. Ads, I mean, I, yeah. Do it while you the can. Ads, uh -huh. I don't care about <laughs> yeah. the ads, but it's like. My question is, yeah. could a bar hang up, you know, their hemp <laughs> beverage mm. poster in a bar? We'll come on down to our event on Wednesday, and we'll we'll let you know. Oh, let's go. Get All right. Well, we're going to cut here. We are going to come back, and we're going to sample some products. I'm really excited. We actually have some people coming in our studio here that are going to be telling us a little bit more about their product. John, you spoke to them. Excited to try some oh. ganja sco. Ganja <laughs> scodin. Ganja scodin. Okay. And then we're going to come on back, have an interview from Jeff Brinkman of Superior Cannabis. And then at the end, we're going to be diving deep into CannaConnect. So stick around, and we'll be right back. See you guys. 